Well, Mike Smith, man, let's bring in some company. We pretended uh, last week, and I think we did a very good job of pretending oh, yeah, that we, we knew what it. we were talking about and we knew what we were looking at when it came to oh, the yeah. NBA draft. We gave uh, out all out the, the grades. I'll tell you, <laughs> hey, look, Mike, out of all the people I saw in the first round, I may have recognized like two or three names, and then I got, I thought I knew them, and then once I saw them, I was like, that's not the guy I thought it was. So I didn't know anybody. But we got to talk to somebody who knows everything uh, about college basketball and other things. It's our guy, Jeff Goodman. What's up, Jeff? That's a great shirt, by the way. Chicago State. Well, what's up, man. boys? Yeah, a little Chicago State repping, repping Chicago State. Um, everything's good. I'm sitting here quarantining uh, at the Mohegan Sun. We got college hoops okay. games starting up. Well, we think they're starting up uh, Wednesday, but. Um, Baylor was supposed to be here, the number one team in the country. They are not here now because Scott Drew got COVID and the other teams didn't want to play them. So Arizona State basically said, we're out unless they're out. So then Baylor got booted. And now we've got maybe a Villanova Arizona State game on Thursday, which would be pretty good. But it's, it's, yeah, it's not pretty right now when it comes to college. Bro, bro, college football can't even play once a week. Like, why are they right. even trying right. to do a traditional college basketball season as it relates to non-conference yes. and tournaments? Like, why? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just go conference only. And to me, you got to do it the way – the Big Ten, I wrote this yesterday. They're doing it the best way. They're testing every day so that if one person gets a positive, they don't shut down everybody for 14 days. That's the biggest problem right now because – You've got some programs like, like for instance, Stetson. All right, I'll give you an example. 14-day shutdown. Come back, practice for six. One other guy gets hit, shut down for 14. How many times can these kids deal with that before they just say, you know what, I'm done. I'm opting out. I'm not dealing with, with sitting in my hotel room. I don't mind it right now because, honestly, my wife and daughter wanted to get rid of me anyway. But ultimately, <laughs> these kids have sit in there for 40 days. Seriously. 40 days in a hotel room. Some of these kids, I have one kid, he never tested positive. And I talked to him 47 days sitting in a hotel room, can't leave the hotel room to do anything. No exercise. The only exercise he's getting is over a Zoom call with, with the trainer or uh, one of the assistant coaches. That's it. That's, that's, that's awful. Ridiculous. You know, you know what, Jeff? I, I thought of you the other day, uh, the last time we talked with you, you were giving us a lot of insight about uh, Greg Marshall uh, fr yeah. from Wichita State, and I saw that he did step down. Uh, what's the you – give us some I – mean, well, we know the story. The story was, was shocking yeah. in a lot of ways. But as you pointed out when we talked with you, he's got a lot of equity in that area, and a lot of people are afraid of him. What led to uh, the demise? Was it an influential alum saying – now, uh, hey, we, we don't want it. Like, how, how did it happen? Was it the business community? What was it? No, I, I think, honestly, I mean, think about this, guys. He walked out of there with $7.75 $7 million. So, like, if you're Greg Marshall, you, you've had a lot of boosters and money people behind you. Otherwise, you wouldn't have walked out of there with almost $8 million. Um, I, I really think it was honestly, and I'm not taking credit myself, I, the Athletic jumped in, the Wichita paper jumped in, the Eagle I think it was enough pressure um, and the fact that a lot of the former players also came forward, talked to the investigators and said, yes, we saw this. The other thing, guys, is not once through all this did we ever see Fred Van Vliet, Ron Baker, Landry Shamit, the three most famous people from that team in which Shaq Morris got punched. None of them came forward and defended Greg Marshall. They were all completely quiet. Uh, so to me, that was telling. Uh, and I think that was telling for Wichita State saying we couldn't keep this guy. Nobody's really behind him. Yes, we've got some money people behind him. And ultimately, they, they made a deal, $7.75 million they gave him on the way out. And, and now he won't talk and they won't talk. Obviously, it's one of those kind of non-disclosure type deals. All right. So, um, like Michael said, we, we faked it until we made it uh, last week <laughs> when it came to the NBA draft. <laughs> Uh, give us a, a couple of uh, picks that stood out to you that you really like based on the fact that you watch these kids for a living, so you would know. Yeah, I would say that the biggest one for me right off the bat was I love James Wiseman at number two. Okay, that, that's the biggest thing for me. I didn't love 
uh, Anthony Edwards or LaMelo Ball at one and three, and I can tell you why after. But I love Wiseman at, at, at two, with or without Clay. Obviously, with Clay would be a whole lot better because you got Steph, you got Clay, you got Draymond, you added Andrew Wiggins as your fourth guy. Wiseman is, he runs the court like David Robinson. He's not David Robinson, okay? He can't score like that. But physically, he looks the part. He's seven one. He's long. He's athletic. He can block shots. He can alter shots. He's a little soft. But I think Draymond will correct that pretty quickly. Um, what he can do, he can catch lobs from Steph. He can run the court. He'll get easy baskets that way. He can give you 20 minutes this year and eventually be a guy that can be a cornerstone player if he gets tougher. But he's got all the physical abilities. Obviously, it's not a big man's game anymore. But I, I think he can be like DeAndre Ayton, but a better defensive player and a more reliable person than DeAndre Ayton has been so far in Phoenix. So tell us, you know, you teased us with uh, Anthony Edwards and LaMelo Ball. Uh, yeah. what, what aren't you feeling about those guys? A lot of red flags, guys. I mean, listen, I've known, mm -hmm. we'll start with LaMelo. I, I'll start with LaMelo. I was in Lithuania with him. Uh, I, unfortunately, I can say I probably uh, spent way too much time with LaVar. Uh, LaMelo is a guy who has elite court vision and passing ability, much like his brother Lonzo. But Lonzo does it um, in a way that, to me, he does it the right way. Simple, right? He just makes the easy play. If there's somebody he's got to outlet it to, he doesn't waste time. He outlets it. Everything with LaMelo is flash and sizzle. And he's got some of the Rondo in him that way from a passing ability, okay? From, from his court vision and passing ability, dribble, 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 no look. Now, what he doesn't have from Rondo, Rondo could really guard when he got in the league. LaMelo, awful defensively. Atrocious habits defensively. And oh, by the way, he shoots it like Rondo in a sense. He shot 25% last year overseas. But the difference, Rondo knew he couldn't shoot it. LaMelo thinks he can shoot. So that scares the hell out of me. So there's a lot that has to be deprogrammed from LaMelo Ball. And I just feel like in Charlotte, guys, like how's it going to be deprogrammed? Like in Golden State, yeah, it would have worked. But like Minnesota, Charlotte, like come on. And he's going to take the ball out of Devontae Graham and Terry Rozier's hands. You just paid Terry Rozier $18 million a year ago. Like, what are you doing? Mike, Michael Jordan has no idea. Mitch Kupchak has Ahem. no idea what they're doing over there in Charlotte. Zero. Zero. Oh, say that again. What was that? Oh, okay. I, I was trying to tell uh, Michael Smith. Michael Smith, Smith is yesterday. a big Mitch Kupchak fan. No? No. 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 The, but see, Michael, this is about five times you didn't misquote me, and we ain't even through the first hour of the show. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> I, I love not, you guys. I love you guys. I am I'm not ready. in any way trying to suggest. I would be like arguing against, you know, the day of the week it is. Like, yes, Michael Jordan has been awful <laughs> as an owner, uh, you know, of the Charlotte franchise. But what I'm saying is we were specifically talking about uh, Gordon Hayward. Gordon Hayward. We were talking about Gordon Hayward's four-year, $120 million deal. And all I was saying. Awful. Atrocious. Okay. <laughs> But he was going, but Jeff, he was going to get paid somewhere. And he was going to get paid maybe not 30 million a year, but right. 20, 25, high 20s by somebody. And in free agency, as you know, especially trying to get him to come to Charlotte, they had to overpay to get him. Whether they should have wanted him or not is, a, is a, you could debate that. But other teams did. There wasn't market for him. And sure enough, Every NBA insider, Michael Holly, backed me up yesterday saying that, yeah, it was $25 million on the table for him in multiple places. That's all I was saying. Which, to me, to me, again, we watch Gordon Hayward enough, right? We all have. Do we have any confidence that Gordon Hayward is going to stay healthy for the next four years? Any of us? None. I have zero. I hope I'm wrong. I love Gordon Hayward. Love him. I've known him since he was at Butler. I love him. I want him to be successful. I would not pay him more than $20 million on a three-year deal right now, uh, uh, per year. I, I think you're out of your yeah, minds to go four years. He's one of those guys that, and this is why, I'm telling you, I agree with you. He's one of those guys where you're like, let somebody else pay him. On, by, the, right. by the same token, it ain't my money. <laughs> it's Charlotte. Free agents are going to Charlotte, like talking about it, you know? No, yeah, good point. Good point. Anthony Edwards. So let me give you the quick Anthony Edwards. I was going to ask you Anthony the, the, the Edwards. Version. Yeah, 40% from the field, 29% from three, 
And man, did Georgia suck last year. Like, that's all you need to know. And there's some other red flags off the court that NBA guys were, were concerned about. Now, again, not concerned enough in this week draft at the top where they didn't take him number one, Minnesota. But I don't like the fact that your key three guys are Carl Anthony Towns, D'Angelo Russell, and Anthony Edwards. Like, to me, I would have brought in, like, Garrett Temple. I would have paid Garrett Temple more money and just said, hey, Anthony Edwards, you are going to live with Garrett Temple, and you're going to learn the right way. And, and you know what, D'Angelo Russell? You can live with Garrett Temple also, and you can both learn the <laughs> right way to do things, the right way to handle yourselves, be professionals, and Garrett Temple, not the most talented dude in the world, but, man, he is the guy. Like, to me, again, you want, like, Udonis Haslam in your locker room. Like, those guys are, are so important in teaching young players, and Anthony Edwards needs to learn, and he's not learning from – so uh, after the trade, who, who, who should they have taken after yeah. the trade? Though, real quick, I'm sorry, Michael. Who should they have taken if they can't trade out of one? Who should they have taken instead of Anthony Edwards? Man, it, no, it's a good, it's a good point. I'm not. I'm listen. You, you've heard me on the mellow. I like Wiseman better, but I don't know if I could pair him with Carl Anthony Towns. Like they don't right, fit. Right. So I understand why you probably have to take Anthony Edwards there. What I'm saying is, you better get a strong culture with some veterans to be able to yep. teach those three dudes. Cause Carl Anthony Towns still ain't there either guys. Let's be honest. They need people that can teach. Like, obviously like there Jimmy are only Butler? a few KGs. <laughs> yeah, which is shocking. <laughs> Listen, Jimmy's That's changed funny. like, like, like nobody's changed uh, their image more than Jimmy Butler has in the past year. Right. I mean, it's amazing yeah. before Miami. And I was saying it too. I was like, he's a, he's a locker room cancer. Nobody wants him. Nobody likes him. And he goes to the right place with the right guys around him, Goran Dragic being one of them. And then everybody kind of follows. And, and Bam out of bio. Yeah. You know, you, you got to have the right coach and the right players for Jimmy Butler. It didn't work, obviously, for like Fred Hoiberg in Chicago. It didn't work in Philly for Brett Brown. But it works in Miami. You know, one day we do a podcast or something we're going to have to get into Garrett Temple, not only his story, but his dad's story, too. It's really incredible. Yes, Collis. Uh, oh, love yeah, Collis. Just amazing story. But let me ask you. I, was, I love this because I, I started off on draft day saying to Michael, there's so many good players outside of the lottery. Yeah. If you just look back over the years since 2000, tons and tons of good players that people have missed. When we look back on this draft, Jeff Goodman, give me two names that outside of the lottery that – Oh, man, we missed him. I can't believe we missed this talented player. Who who, who has that profile? I, I like Precious Atua. Miami got him at number 20, and uh, he's perfect for them because now, again, you're not going to play him 30 minutes because you already have Bam out of bio. He's similar to Bam. He's a guy who's big, strong, athletic, can play uh, inside, really came into Memphis as a guy who wanted to play like a 4-3, but James Wiseman left after three games after the NCAA suspension. So Achua had to go in and do some work uh, down in the paint. Uh, but again, he's, he's big, strong, athletic, kind of like, like Bam. And, and to me, Bam can't play 48 minutes. So now you can, you can get more out of Bam playing 32, 34, and have Achua playing, uh, playing a big role. And then, listen, if Bam, who, who just signed extension, if he leaves in a few years, you've got a guy who can step right in and, and hopefully help. Uh, another guy who I love, I know you said outside the lottery, but I loved him. Uh, just the back end of the lottery, Devin Vassell. Florida State went to San Antonio at number 11. I, I think he has a chance to be maybe one of the better players coming out of this draft. Uh, a 3 and D guy, great shooter with size who can really guard. And, and he can do more than just that. He's a guy who came out of high school as a mid-major kid. I love both the Florida State guys. Pat Williams, Patrick Williams, I know he's a little bit of a reach by Chicago at four. But again, like you said earlier, you're like, well, who would you take instead? Well, listen, Pat Williams has a high, high ceiling because, again, he's big. Strong. He looks like Kawhi, and he's got some of the same intangibles from when I covered Kawhi in college. Like Pat Williams, pretty quiet, just wants to play ball, doesn't really care about any of the other BS, will defend, will accept the role. Not a great shooter yet, but I'm telling you, he's going to work. I'm not saying he's going to beat Kawhi. But I'm saying I, I just I love some of those similarities of the guy that doesn't give a crap about what we say. He just wants the ball out. Hey, man, 
Way to put up some points, as always, Jeff Goodman. We appreciate you, Brett. Enjoy Mohegan Sun. I'm not sure how much you could really do, per se, but, you know. Listen, yeah, the blackjack Make table, the looking at it, it was killing me. Killing me walking up here and seeing the blackjack <laughs> table, not being able to go down there. Crushing oh, me. Man. Thanks, strength, guys. Baby. Appreciate it. Have some Happy strength, Thanksgiving, yeah. brother. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave, and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.